cut and paste, control X, control V, control X, control V, and control X, control V, control X, and control V. Boom. All right. And then we have it in one column. So now if I sum up this column, this is the total debits, debits, and credits should come out to zero equals the sum of those. Uh, did, let's go all the way up here, up to the top. And it adds up to zero. So that's my check figure that everything uh, looks good. We could do a fancy formatting down here and say, uh, as long as this is, if it's, if it's greater than uh, well, let's just, I'll leave it, I'll leave it like that. I won't, I won't do fancy formatting right now. Let's put, let's make it a different color just for now. So I'll make it green and actually, <laughs> I don't know which color I want. Let's make it black and white. Let's make it for now. Let's make it black and white to see that that's my total column. Okay. So then. <laughs> Then let's go down. Now, I don't really need anything. See, this gives me like the, the drop down and then the subcategories. So I don't really need those subcategories. So that if I go to my worksheet over here, you can see the balance sheet has these bank accounts and then the subcategory or, or where we went on property, plant and equipment. I have a furniture and a fixture as a parent and then a subcategory. I just want the accumulated depreciation. I don't need the parent here so what I'm going to do is say is just delete all of the ones that have a colon in it just so I have the the actual account not including the parent. So I'm going to delete that. So let's see if there's any more of those. Here's one. So I'm going to delete everything from the colon on before. Uh, this one is just California is just a super long payable account. <laughs> and then this one, let's delete everything here to do and then this one let's do the same and then i could do everything for all these liability accounts payroll liability i might have to combine these into one account actually might be the better way to go and and by the way that could be another method that you might you you might you might start with a summary balance sheet right but that could cause you problems because when you import it into uh, into QuickBooks, it's going to go account by account rather than, you know, the summary. So I think this is the safer way to go to actually see all of the accounts. So that's what we'll do. And then everything. So now I'm on the income statement. So everything from down to here, the balance sheet stops right here. Now, here's where we get. Here's where I'm going to make the adjustment. So this whole thing right here if I sum this up should be the equity section because it's the income statement, right? So boom. And so that comes out to 79, uh, 270 for total equity, or that's what, that's what the equity will be when the income statement is rolled out into it. In other words, if I look at the balance sheet over here, uh, and I pull out a trustee calculator and we said, and we just say, okay, here's the equity section. And so here's, uh, let's do this for February. So here's the whole income statement. That's the bottom line of the income statement, which was 132447, 13, So that's going to close out to the set. So 77,896 plus the 132.47 gives us the 79 270 47 that should give us the 79 uh, 220 47 sorry i said it wrong i think and then and then the income statement here the income statement is just credits minus the debits on the income statement so here's the income statement which is 13 uh 1324 right that's what the income was 1324 and then 1324 plus what's in owner's equity gives us this 79220. So I'm just going to delete this whole thing and just put 79220 in there. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to close out the income statement, negative 79220. 
I can also see down here that's what I need to be in balance. And then I can delete the entire income statement. I'm just going to go from here, uh, the billable, and then 31 down to 49. Right click and delete. So then this is still a good formula. So now I'm still in balance because my debits equal the credits. I just have my balance sheet uh, starting balance sheet. So this is my starting point balance sheet. So then uh, we can budget out what's going to happen on a monthly basis, or we, we might do the budget like on a quarterly basis, right? We might not do like a budget after each month uh, because it's kind of tedious to do that. Maybe we do a budget, a budgeted balance sheet where we will be at the end of the quarter or the end of the, the half a year, end of a year. But we'll do months, we'll start to do months right now. So where will we be at the end of each month? This isn't a performance thing. It's where are we going to end at at the end of each month? So I'm going to add a, a, a column, a row by selecting row one, right clicking and insert. And then I'm going to make a skinny over here. And then I'm going to say Jan and then Feb. And then I should be able to select those two, put my cursor on the fill handle, drag it to the right till we get to uh, December. Boom. And then I'll make that a header by going home tab, font group, black, white. Let's center it. I'm also going to make A a little bit smaller because the only reason it's long is because of this. And it, I don't even need that one. I don't even need that one, man. I should just delete you right here, right now, this long account. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So there. So now we have everything kind of on one page. So this is where we, we stand. Our, our, we're, what we're going to imagine to be our starting point, we're kind of going to imagine, even though this was for January and February, we'll imagine this is where we were at at the end of December of the prior year, right? And then we'll make some assumptions to see, okay, how can we get from there to see what's going to happen and where, and then where will we be at the end of January, which in part, in large part, is the performance of the profit and loss report. But again, it gets a little bit more complicated than that because of everything else that's going on. If you have accounts receivable, then how much is in accounts receivable versus, you know, the, the cash or the checking account for, for the revenue that we generated? You know, there's cash flow issues. What if we, we purchase uh, equipment and so on and so forth? So it's actually a, a bit more complex. We'll use some conventions just to give you an idea of the budgeting processes that you could apply. But again, we have other courses and sections on this. This borders into basically getting into like uh, finance and managerial accounting concepts. And we have courses on that if you wanted to dive into to those topics in more detail.